Hello and welcome back. I'm here today to teach you how to solder. Now this is going to be a little bit longer video. There's a lot of prep work and safety and steps that you have to remember. It might seem overwhelming at first, but once you've done it once or twice, it really isn't that difficult. Refer back to the video as you need. Take notes during the video. I highly recommend that. The first thing you need to think about when you're getting ready to solder is prepping your metal. So let's pause here and make sure your metal is ready to go. To prep your metal for solder, you need to first design it, cut it out, sand it to 300, and file it. What you're looking for is a piece that's got clean metal, it's fit, and it's flush. So let me explain that. Clean metal means it's sanded to 300. You don't need to go beyond 300 because in the soldering process, all you need is that clean metal exposed. We'll sand more when we're done soldering. Fit and flush are two really important things to look for as well as that clean metal. Fit means in a place like this, where these two clouds come in and they touch this other piece of metal and they're supposed to fit tight together, those edges should be fit. So there shouldn't be any weird gaps here or here. And if there is, if there's a gap like that, I would come in with a file and I would fix that before I would solder. That is fit. Two pieces fit next to each other as intended. Flush means that the overlay, this is the overlay, the top pieces, fit flush or flat against the bottom piece of metal. To check for that, you're gonna tilt your eyes down and you're gonna look right at the edge where that metal meets metal. And what I'm looking for when I look that way is no gaps. And if we look across this whole bracelet, we see that there are no gaps between leaves and the metal underneath. If we look at the clouds on this piece, we're good. The problem on this piece is the moon. Look at how that tip pops right up. That is not flush. That will not solder down. Metal needs to touch metal in order to solder. I'm going to use a wooden mallet. And I think I've got it as close as I'm going to get. When I'm soldering, I might, there's a few spots on this moon I might have to push down when it gets hot enough to solder. These pieces are ready to go to the soldering bench. They have clean metal, they are fit, and they are flush. Make sure you double check all of that before you start soldering. If there's an error with any of those three, you're not going to get your metal to solder. All right, the next step is making sure you are ready to go. So let's talk safety and soldering, okay? First thing you need to know is that you need good ventilation. If you're soldering in a school environment, that should be set up for you already. We have a vent hood over our soldering bench and it needs to be turned on every time you solder. So go turn that vent hood on right now. The other thing you need to be aware of when you're soldering is where your fire safety devices are in your space. If you do not have a fire extinguisher, near your soldering bench, you need to get one before you solder. If you're in my classroom, I'll show you where those are before we get started. You also should be aware of where um, fire alarms are. We have a fire alarm pole directly to the left of our soldering bench. If you're in my classroom, I want you to look for it right now. The next thing you need to be aware of is your personal safety. So it would make sense what to do, right? Anytime we're in the shop, we wear safety goggles. Same goes for when we're soldering. The other thing that you need to think about when you solder is pulling that hair back. Sometimes I skip steps and last year I didn't pull my hair back and it was about this short when this happened and I was soldering and I leaned forward and part of my hair started on fire. So all hair gets tied back. If you have medium, um, longish hair, um, you know, in my range or longer, you can tie it up. If it's really long, make sure you scoop it back under itself. Make sure things like this aren't hanging out. If they are, tuck them back in. Um, and if you have hair that is kind of shorter than mine, you can't tie it up. I'd like you to wear a headband or clip it back with barrettes, a bandana to hold it back, just so nothing's falling forward into your face. You also need to make sure you don't have anything hanging down on your clothing, like earbuds are not allowed at my soldering bench. You cannot listen to music in earbuds when you're soldering. Um, you also can't have sweatshirt strings hanging down, so if you have those, tuck those in. Scarves, take off. Long necklaces, take off. You don't want anything flowing into that solder bench. So hair up, goggles on, 
dangly things off, and just make sure you're aware of where safety precautions are. Once you've got yourself safe, then you can go over to your soldering bench and you can get started. Double check you turn that vent fan on. Have fun, do not be afraid. If you know how to work things, it's perfectly safe to solder. Just take your time and be thoughtful about what you're doing, okay? Welcome to our soldering bench. This is our vent hood, I have it turned on. I've got my goggles on, my hair back, my metal clean and prepped. I've got to kind of orient you to the, state, the space that we're working in, okay? We have flux. We keep it in this little container and everybody in my class has their own atomizer. This is an atomizer. I'll show you how to use that and what we use it for in a little bit. Flux is put onto our metal which allows the solder to um, adhere to both metals and to flow. Without flux you cannot solder. Every once in a while I have a student that'll be like, ah, oh, Miss Sable, the, the solder just isn't flowing, it's not working right. And I'll say, did you flux it? And I'll say, of course I did. And then we check and they didn't. You need to make sure you flux your metal. We'll talk about how to do that. The flux that we use is Rio Grande's anti-fire scale coating Cupronil flux. It works really wonderfully. Um, I would highly recommend it, but a lot of teachers and a lot of other folks use um, flux that you can brush on. It's a little bit quicker, um, but I like the outcome with this a lot. The other thing that you need to solder is solder. We're going to start using hard solder. Eventually I'll show you how to do a bezel set and we'll solder a bezel with easy solder which melts at a lower melting point. Hard solder is a better solder, it's a stronger hold, um, and that's what we're gonna use when we can use it. So I've got solder and I've got stuff to clean my solder. And last but not least, you need a torch. We use what's called a mini torch or the little, the little torch. Um, works pretty great. Um, our gas source is acetylene, and of course we need oxygen. Uh, to make fire, you need a fuel source, you need oxygen and you need heat. For the heat to start our fire, we use a striker. This is a striker. You just go across, it creates a spark. If you've been in a chemistry classroom and used a Bunsen burner, you've probably used a striker. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to light the torch. This is something that I like my students to kind of practice a few times before they start the actual process of soldering. Um, they usually get a little anxious about it, although there's no need to be. Okay, let's light our torch. First thing you need to know is what these two knobs contain or control. The red knob is like fire. This is the gas. This is our acetylene. We need to light the gas and then we add the oxygen. This is the oxygen, okay? The gas comes out of the tip here and we are going to use the striker to ignite that gas. One thing my students do is they get a little nervous about striking and they'll hold the striker like this blocking the flow of gas, which will cause the flame to come back towards your hand. And this is small, it's not gonna come back and engulf your hand in, hand in flames, but it is not correct. When you strike, you wanna hold at an angle. So practice that first. We're holding it at an angle to the torch. Okay, so we're not blocking the gas, we're just coming in along the side. The other thing you wanna do when you're using the striker is you don't wanna push down and across because it's gonna get stuck. You wanna push across and down just a little bit to get that strike going. Okay, I'm going to have you hold your striker in your left hand and hold the torch in your right hand. Even if you're left-handed, you're gonna do and start like this. You're gonna take these two fingers, you're gonna turn the gas a quarter turn. So I know it's a quarter turn if my top finger is on the top and then I turn it and it's on the left side. So quarter turn and strike. There we go. I lit the torch. <laughs> Next thing you're gonna do is you're going to turn the gas up slowly. And what we're looking for here is what we call a cone. So you're gonna see it get really bright and white. And I'm just slowly turning. And then we've got this little blue thing here. That's our cone. What we're looking for is where it just goes from that bright white and orange just to the blue and then we stop. If we go too far with the oxygen, it'll blow the flame out. Or it'll act like that, which isn't good. So again, we wanna go just past that white till we got a nice blue cone, all right? When you're ready to turn off your torch, we're going to turn off the gas, which might make it pop. Okay, the pop is okay, and then we'll turn off the oxygen. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So let's go over that again. We're gonna hold the striker in our left hand. 
We do that because right as soon as we turn, we can light it. If I put it down, turn, pick it up, light, I've got more gas going out around me, okay? So striker in left hand, quarter turn to the left, strike, add oxygen, until you have a nice blue cone. That's how you light a torch. To turn it off, we go righty tighty, gas, then oxygen. That blows the excess gas out of the tip of our torch. Practice that a few times before you actually start soldering. Make sure every time you're done with the torch, double check that you've got both of those closed down so we don't waste gas. Now you know how to light a torch. Next begins our first step in soldering. Our first step in soldering is fluxing our metal. And I'm gonna flux right on the brick of my workbench. And if you look, this is pretty dirty based on lots of flux being um, sprayed onto our metal multiple times. So I've got a brush I keep in the center drawer of our cabinet, and I'm just gonna lightly brush off the surface. This also helps because I've got a shared bench. I can't guarantee that the person before you um, was super careful. So if there's any little pieces of solder, this helps make sure that's taken off. And then I'm gonna put my brush away. I'm going to lay out my metal for soldering. All right, I've laid out my metal that I need to solder onto the workbench. I've got a soldering block, this is where I'll actually do the work of soldering, that I have up here to move my metal to. I have tweezers that are handy, this is what I use to move metal around once I've started using my torch because I'm going to assume once that torch is on all metal is hot and I will not touch it with my fingers from this point on. Um, and I've got my bottle with my atomizer ready to apply flux. I'm gonna show you this step from a couple of different angles. When we apply flux, we use this flux aerator, goes into the bottle, we hold it like this, okay? So I usually have my left hand on the front of this tube that allows me to hold it in place, and then you put your mouth on the little thing here and you blow. And so I usually have students make sure their atomizer works, they just put this tip into a cup of water and they blow on their hand. And if you look, it's applied a thin spray onto my hand. And what we're gonna do is put a thin spray onto our metal, but we need to do that when the metal is hot. So I'm gonna light my torch, make sure my atomizer is not gonna get burnt when I lit it. Quarter turn left, strike. And I'm gonna do my leaves first, so I want a little bit smaller flame. Got a nice cone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scooch myself back. I'm gonna heat my metal and blow. What I'm looking for on my metal is for it to turn white right away. And if you look, I come down at an angle towards my metal. Once I've got one side coated, I'll flip it and I will do the other side. You gotta be careful with little pieces like these leaves, they like to blow away. Blows away, you pick it up with your tweezers and go again. With smaller pieces, it doesn't take too long for the heat to get it hot enough to blow. You don't want your metal red hot before you start that process. I'm gonna change my angle and show you what this looks like working from above, which is where you'll be working. From. Some things to keep in mind when I'm flexing is that I'm always keeping my flame out of the flow of the flux. So when I blow the flux, I shift the flame pointing back towards my vent hood and away. And then I'll heat and I kind of go back and forth, kind of alternating what's pointing where. And again, I hold my um, atomizer with the tip of my finger that, causes, that helps so I can direct it into my mouth and it doesn't roll on me. Another thing to be aware of when you're soldering is where the flame is in relation to your metal. So when I'm heating my metal, the closest I want to get the cone of the flame is about an inch to two inches from the metal. And I'm always moving it. So I'm always, always moving as I heat. When I think I've got the heat right, then I blow. With bigger pieces, it might take a couple times. Once you've built the heat up, it doesn't take as long to heat. So when I'm flipping this over and doing the back side, it doesn't take me nearly as long to get that whole piece up to heat.
Now I'm gonna be soldering, a, or I'm flexing a much bigger piece here. So I'm gonna want a bigger flame. So I'm gonna turn my gas up, then oxygen. Until I have a bigger, hotter flame, it'll go faster. And I'm gonna work from left to right. So I'm gonna heat here on the left. It's gonna take me longer to heat this up. It's a bigger piece. All right, I've got everything flexed front and back. And then what I did is I used my tweezers and I set up my bracelet how I want it to be soldered on top of this soldering block. The soldering block has no flux, it's nice and clean, and it's what we always solder on. Once I've got those set up where they go, and I don't need it exact, I just need to make sure they're set up correctly, I need to pre-melt the solder on the back of all of these overlay. To make sure it's on the back, I just take these now that I've set them up, and I flip them over, upside down. Then I've gotta set up my solder. This takes a while, so I'm going to move this block back out of the way so that I can show you guys how to set up the solder. We use sheet solder. comes in a sheet like this. looks kind of like a really skinny piece of silver. The first thing you're going to do when you come over is you're going to pre-sand. And then we always cut strips down into the metal and then we cut across the strips to make squares. If you look in here, there's already some pre-cut squares that I can use. Some of them, like this one, are way too big. There's not a lot of great places to use those. You want to go for squares more in this size range. So it's about a millimeter by a millimeter square. So if I put it on my finger, I think you can get a better sense of size on that piece. So pretty small little guys. Um, what you do to make those little squares is you just cut down the strips don't cut all the way through and always cut down the line that somebody started before you and if we do that we keep our solder a lot neater. Once you've cut down the strips you're going to put your scissors about a millimeter from the end and you're going to cut with this tipping down straight into this little bin here. And these guys like to bounce out and that's why we always cut down and in to cut only what you need. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my soldering block back up where I'm going to work. I've got one little piece of solder that bounced in there and I'm going to put my solder right next to my piece because I'm going to use tweezers to transfer solder to all of my leaves. I always start in corners so I've got front or top and bottom um, I'm going to call the edges of these pieces a corner. It's not a geometric shape, but the concept still works. And then on a piece like this, I'll probably put another piece along the edge. And if you look at my solder placement, I don't put it right next to the edge because what I don't want is so much solder that it pours out um, beyond my piece into the background because um, that's a lot of cleanup that you're not going to want to do. Trust me on that. And on this piece, I'm going to put one piece in the middle. And you might ask, like, well, Ms. Sebo, why don't you just put like one big old piece on this? It'll spread out and you won't have all this time putting these little pieces of solder on everything. Well, the answer is, is it won't spread out evenly. By putting multiple small pieces of solder on a piece, you're going to have um, better and more even spread. And your goal is to have just enough solder that the entire bottom of your overlay is covered with solder, but none leaks out and there's no holes inside or around the edges. Um, knowing how much solder to use takes a little bit of experience. So as you're setting up your first solder, once you've got it set up and you think you've got the right amounts of solder in the right places, have me pop over and take a look. Um, and if you don't have enough or you have too much, I'll let you know and I'll help you get it reset.
I've got my solder set up and I'm ready to go to the next step, which is pre-melting the solder. I also wanted to show you this piece here and how I have the solder set up. Now I'm not done, but you can see that I've laid out solder in that upper left hand corner at each corner or tip along the outside edge. And I've also laid solder into each of the inside edges along that oak leaf. It's gonna take a lot more time to set this up and you need to make sure you're using the right size piece for the right area. So I've got really little pieces in my skinny areas and on my edges and my bigger pieces are in towards the center of the piece. For my next step, I'm gonna pre-melt my solder. So I'm going to start my torch again. I wanna make sure I'm not pointing the tip down at my metal because if I do that when this torch lights, it sends out soot, um, which would cause the piece not to solder. And I wanna have a nice cone. I do not need a big flame um, because these are pretty small pieces. So again, to find that right size cone, you go just past that yellow right to where it hits blue right there. I'm gonna go about an inch from my metal and I'm gonna keep moving my torch about an inch from the metal. And as soon as that solder melts, I'll move on to the next piece. Go slow, don't get your flame too close to your metal. You just wanna barely melt the solder so that it's well adhered to this overlay. Your next step after you've melted the solder is to use your tweezers to flip your pieces back onto the back piece. So you're gonna put your overlay back on. Take your time with this setup step. You want your pieces exactly where you want them to stay because once they're soldered down, they're not moving anywhere. So it's really important that you set these pieces up just so. Double check that everything's where you want it and that things are both fit and flush. All right, let's talk flame size. I'm about to solder this bracelet and there's a lot of heavy brass underneath. If I use a small flame, which this is right now, I'll hold the um, striker up next to it so you can kind of see the size. If I use a small flame on this, it's gonna take me 20 years to solder it. So I'm gonna turn up my gas and I'm gonna turn up my oxygen and I'm gonna use a little bit bigger flame. I'm going to point my torch straight down at my surface and when I solder, if I get too close with that cone, if you watch the bench, you see how the bench is starting to heat up too much? If I get too close with that cone, if I get right on top of my piece with that cone, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna melt my metal. So I need to keep it about an inch to two inches away. If I'm too far away, it'll take a long time to heat. So an inch to two inches away and straight up and down so I'm directing my heat right where I want it to go. Now I usually work left to right because I'm a righty on a piece like this that's big and long. And I'm gonna heat the back piece first because we've gotta get all the metal to the same heat to melt the solder. And if you think about it, those little pieces are gonna heat really fast. And in fact, you'll probably see them um, start to turn red before this back piece, just from the heat from the left of my torch. I'm gonna keep my torch about the tip of the cone about inch to two inches away, and I'm gonna keep moving, moving, moving. Right now, my metal's starting to look a little sweaty and I'm gonna move the torch away so you can see that. My flux has melted in that spot and it looks a little shiny. That means we're getting closer to heat. And I'm gonna keep trying to heat up that background until I've got it hot enough that the solder's gonna melt on the whole thing. starting to see the rest of the solder get hot enough and I'm seeing it come down and out and around that littlest leaf there. Look for that little bit of silver. You look for like a little silver ring or a river around the edges. Copper, when it's reached soldering heat, gets kind of a warm red glow to it. You can kind of see it there on the bottom left and right leaf. Um, brass, however, does not give you that color change indication, so you gotta be a little bit more careful with the brass. Once I know I've soldered the two the leaves, I'm gonna move over to the next section and I'm gonna kinda try to pull that heat over. Every time I get one section soldered, the next section's gonna go a little faster um, because there's already heat built up in the piece. So again, 
trying to heat around the small piece. Pull that heat over in the band. I'm tilting my head to the side and coming down low and I'm looking for a little rim of silver around the edge of my piece. And I can see a little bit there on the left. I'm gonna pull it to the right. I can see it there on the right. I'm gonna pull it up and down. Um, I believe you're catching a little bit of it on the camera, but really like so many things with metals, it's something that just experience will teach you what to look for. So you gotta give it a shot and you've gotta watch carefully as you're going through the process. keeping pulling that heat over, keeping my torch straight up and down so I'm directing the heat where I intend to direct it. I'm looking for both the color of the metal, if there's copper involved or silver also gives you kind of like a heat color cue. Um, and I'm also looking for that little silver river. Just because I see solder on the overlay doesn't mean that it's adhered to the bottom. So I can see the solder crawling up to the top of this leaf and now I'm starting to see the solder flow around the base. Sometimes if the tip of this isn't wanting to stick down, I'll come in with the tweezers, I'll give it a little push. I have a heftier pair of tweezers on the bench that I do this with, just to make sure that that's getting soldered down. So I'll get it to heat, push and remove the heat, there we go. Gonna do the same on the bottom of this big guy. Get it to heat, push. There we go. All right, I believe that I am soldered down, so I'm gonna turn my torch off. I always check before I put it into the pickle, which is the last step. So I tilt it to the side and I look for any gaps in the soldering and I'm actually I'm seeing a couple gaps, the tip of this leaf, the edge of this one. And if there's any gaps, I turn my torch back on and I fix it before I flux it. Once you flux it, you can't really come back in and modify it. And with these bracelets, we're going to turn or bend them. And in the process of turning them, if there's a weak solder joint, it's going to fail and your leaf or your overlay is gonna pop off. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's super, super frustrating. All right, the last step in all of this is to pickle the metal. Pickling the metal is putting the metal into an acidic solution, um, which cleans off the flux off the surface, and it also starts to dissolve some of this fire scale and dirt and impurities that you can see have risen to the surface. Whenever we pickle stuff, we pick it up with the copper tongs. So there's a copper tongs right next to our pickle container, so I'll go get one of those. I'll pick this up with the tongs, not my hands. I would burn myself horribly if I touched this right now, and I'm gonna pop it into the pickle. Another route for soldering when you have a really large piece with a lot of metal volume is to preheat both the overlay and the back piece prior to soldering. So there I was melting, pre-melting the solder on the back of the overlay and I'm heating up the back piece. Because the overlay covers most of the back, it's going to be hard for my torch to heat that back piece up once I have the overlay on top. So I heated up the back piece until it was about soldering temperature. Now I'm quickly placing the overlay on with my tweezers, always use your tweezers, and now I'm coming back with the torch to heat the whole piece. I'm also using a pretty hefty flame. Take your time in these steps, my friends. Each of these has sat in the pickle for a couple of hours. Um, I just use vinegars, vinegar in my studio so it can sit in overnight or even over a weekend. The longer it sits, the more it dissolves. It'll never clean everything off, however. So now I need to go to my next step, which is cleaning up my soldered pieces.